All righty, howdy traders and investors, and welcome to our doubles crypto battle number 50, sponsored by ACAP. My name is Gary Fickard, known to many as the FX Big Dog. You can search me on my YouTube channel. You can search me anywhere on Google, and you will find me, of course, search FX Big Dog, or you can visit tradersnetworkclub.com. Now, if you're watching this battle, trading battle on YouTube, and you have not subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and do so. Subscribe to the channel because we do trade battles every single week. And so if you subscribe to the channel, you will know when we go live because you're also going to go ahead and click the notification bell. Now, by clicking the notification bell, when we go live, you will know exactly when we go live and you won't miss a single thing. Now, while you're down there, please go ahead and do me a, a, a huge favor. Go ahead and smash the like button. Share this video on your social media as well so we can get this video out to as many traders as possible. Now, today is our doubles crypto battle and some interesting challenges. We have mom and pop's crypto rising star. We have uh, uh, token metric elites. So grab a pen and paper, take some notes as we hear from these challenges and how they're going to conquer the market today. So without further ado, let me go introduce to you the challenges for today for trading battle number 50. In the one corner, we have miss crypto mom who, who is yay up with, <laughs> there we go who has teamed up with simba the lion king crypto no i'm just kidding all right i just threw that in i just threw that in to good make job, it sound job. better all right i like good that job. i like it <laughs> you, you do now brenda <laughs> brenda has spent almost 20 years of a trading for in traditional financial industry sorry let me say that again she spent 20 years in traditional financial industries before she was introduced by her daughter to blockchain technology. Brenda believes that cryptocurrency will break the, uh, the generational curses of poverty and open up a new world to the new decentralized financial markets without gatekeepers. She earned her title, Crypto Mom, which is great, and uh, was mm -hmm. vital to her success launching, a, launching several NFT projects. She is the CEO of Bets. Listen to this again. Be, uh, Bundlebets.com. Bundles with an S. Bets.com uh, that does crypto and sports prediction based on this platform, which is great. So, uh, Brenda, when we talk about uh, traditional financial markets, are we talking about mm -hmm. stocks and options or is it just banking? Just banking. Just banking, right? And, and you never did banking, any, yes. you, never, you never managed anyone's money, OP, uh, OPM or anything like that. It's just really just banking. Just banking, yeah. Real estate underwriting and yeah, mortgage loans and all that. My husband managed um, stocks, did the stock stuff. Mm -hmm. He tried options trading and all that. Yeah, and that's Simba. Simba right. So, <laughs> so Simba, how did you how did you get into cryptos? Uh, was it your daughter that influenced uh, her mother, and then suddenly it was like, hey, I got to jump on this bandwagon? No, it was the Lion King, you know, influencing the rest of the the, the, the pride, you know. Uh, God, that's, you know, that sounds like so, a survivor. No? no, right, right, right. <laughs> so, so originally I was um, you just like you mentioned before, I was just into more the technical side of things. So I always uh, dabbled in you know things, the stocks, forex, and so on and so forth. You know okay so. okay and that was more yeah. in a personal capacity right yes that's that's probably what it is yes. okay all right perfect well great well good uh, good luck for the today uh, today's competition so let me go introduce introduce the uh these the other corner so we have two returning challenges bill and midi both are analysts for uh token metrics midi is studying for his second master's degree in digital currencies and blockchain, while Bill brings his experience working for JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and Goldman Sachs. Midi, do you still agree that South African cricket team is still the best over the Pakistani team? <laughs> yeah, I think we'll have to disagree there. <laughs> I, I think I think in some formats, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll definitely twist you a little bit more later on in the session. I might be able to give you a little a bit of uh, bonus points if you agree. No, I'm just kidding with you, all right? Um, mm -hmm. So, Bill, 
you and Midi uh, both work together. You guys are trading. It's great to have you guys uh, back again. I know that Midi's going to bring a little bit more of the uh, the fundamental aspect behind it. And then, of course, uh, Bill will go ahead and show us exactly what the charts look like and explain to us what's going on when as they go ahead and place these trades. Uh, Bill, so a question, a question for you. Um, how do you see XRP movement? Uh, or maybe this is a media question because it is news. How do you see the XRP movement based on the fact that uh, uh, the XRP are looking to, in fact, go, going to definitely, it seem, seems like it's going to definitely win the lawsuit that's taking place right now? Okay, well, XRP is interesting because it, it's a payment system, right? And yes. I think everybody's going to be looking for an alternative payment system to the dollar. Now, when XRP settles, like, I, I don't know what XRP winning the lawsuit means. Some YouTubers think it means XRP goes to three, right? Other yeah. people, I don't know. I would think that XRP might have to go away and they might have to replace it with something else. Okay. But I think this idea that XRP is an alternative payment system. So when you invest in crypto, things like XRP, QNT, think about crypto as you know, literally a replacement for fiat currencies. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I personally think it's more of a trade idea or event driven strategy rather than um, long term compounding effect of, of, of XRP winning the lawsuit. I feel like one of their competitors, Solana, has Solana Pay and they're also partnered up with USDC. So in terms of portfolio allocation long term, I, I don't see merit of having XRP. I think there are better technologies out there. But in terms of short term trade or event driven strategy, uh, since since crypto is a bit of a niche and nascent industry, uh, you can still say make some money out of it. Could it be a, a case scenario of a, a pump and dump uh, with uh, just once it gets, uh, you know, once the lawsuit is, is won, could it be just a pump initial of excitement, hype behind it, but then it's going to die out quickly? Yeah, I wouldn't say die out quickly, but die out evidently, like uh, over the period of time it will die out because th there's so many great options. Like one of the protocols we'll, we'll discuss today uh, called Near Protocol, they're, they're launching their own stable coin. Then you have Solana, they have, uh, they, they have their own Solana Pay application. So XRP has huge competition from all, all different ar arenas of crypto. And, yeah. and even if they win the lawsuit, like retail will basically become happy. Some people will just uh, take profits or basically recuperate some of the losses they had previously. But once that dies out, I, I think long term, when I say long term in crypto, that means two to three years. I don't see it uh, panning out that great. I don't even see XRP in next three years, even in top 25. Sure. Uh, is, is, anyone, is anyone? I actually uh, agree uh, with that. You, you, okay, go ahead and share. No, no, I'm I'm under the same sentiment as Bill and me. Media, me. media. Media, yeah. Because um I know a lot of people are bullish when the you know after the SEC comes back and says, Hey, I mean you guys you guys are good to go and whatever. Uh, a lot of people think and they're buying a lot of they're aping into XRP, expecting it to get to three dollars. I think what they don't realize that sometimes with the market cap, the way it is, it can only go so high. So I don't see it doing, or even, even though they make it an alternative form of payment, I don't, I don't see it making, you know, a dent in the price as much. It's just mm -hmm. like saying Dogecoin is going to go to, to $10. No, it ain't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's only so much it can go to based on the market cap. Right. And what about, uh, mm -hmm. what about uh, uh, Shiba? Anyone uh, heavily invested in that? Well, I know someone actually mm -hmm. back when they launched that made a million dollars from Shiba, but that was back in 2021. No, no. It launched, it launched 2020 September, I think. And he sold after about eight months. So I think it's not the fact that it's already done a hundred X or a thousand X. I don't see it doing too much more. No, once it's on, I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't see it doing too much more of, of what yeah. it's already done. But there's been a lot of adoption in, in, in Shiba right now, specifically the uh, um, uh, Uber. Uber's taking on payments now in Shiba. And so we've seen a lot of this stuff taking okay. place right now. 
Is it just a just a, a small cap uh, crypto at the moment right now, and will it remain that, or do you think uh, uh, maybe that it might go a little bit bigger than that? I, I think it's part of culture now. Uh, Shiba and Doge. I think if uh, Elon Musk, uh, if he um, becomes a major shareholder in in Twitter, uh, he yeah. basically Doge will become one of the currencies of internet, and in sympathy, Shiba will also rally. And in terms yeah. of like short term uh, short term trade idea, let me quickly share my screen. Uh, our our AI, like uh, our, our proprietary AI models in, in, in token mm -hmm. metrics, they are sure. actually mm -hmm. picking up Shiba Inu on on daily basis. So there is still some momentum. I think Bill can elaborate. I think Shiba is also getting listed in a couple of exchanges recently. So there, there's some, uh, at least in the short run, there are some positive catalysts for uh, Shiba Inu. Plus, I feel in long term, medium run to long run, um, it is still going to be a significant part of our culture. And if Elon Musk uh, spearheads the Twitter, uh, Doge will rally and Shiba could also rally in sympathy. So every catalyst from medium, short run to long run uh, would be supportive of Shiba Inu. Yeah, and it seems to be a battle uh, on Twitter right now with regards to who's taking ownership. The shareholders are jumping in, more shareholders are jumping in. So everyone's trying to jump on Twitter right now. Um, quick question, uh, anyone uh, uh, anyone interested in uh, privacy tokens? Uh, they're really a, a really strong narrative right now um in crypto due to the government overage uh, is anyone paying a little bit more attention to the privacy tokens i Nobody? mean apart from monero well, we'll uh, Bill, did right. you we stuff? were looking at we were looking at zcash right yep. and the the question in zcash is can you buy the dip in other words this mm -hmm. year in crypto right like Z, zcash did really well okay yep. and you can buy small dips but once something cops, it, it hasn't paid to buy the really, like, I don't know, let's call it the big dips, right? Mm. So let, let me, let me, let me see if I can, let me see if I can share screen here. And, and, and while up. you're doing that, Bill, while you're doing that, let's just share with the viewers right now, what privacy tokens are all about is uh, it makes it difficult to work out who sent and what's, who and what sent there's certain certain cryptos so it really is a great thing when you when you're looking to try and uh, hide your financial activity and if anyone's trying to snoop on your your financial activity uh, privacy tokens are a good way to be able to protect that and, and keep that uh, hidden so uh, go for it bill okay so here's here's zcash mm -hmm. okay now what what happened in zcash was it went from 90 no one wanted it in February and then it went all the way up to 220. Okay. Wow. And then there was this huge reversal. It was, it okay. So it, it goes down. Okay. And then it hits the 62% retracement at 135. So basically it went up a lot. It retraced two thirds. And as you can see on the way up, right, it paid to buy the small dips. Yeah. But what about mm. this big dip? Like, you know, everyone knows in crypto, right? You ride the trend and when the party's over and the music stops out, right? Yeah. Out. Yeah. Um, especially in this rangy environment. So it will be interesting to see whether or not Zcash can hold a bid because, you know, many will go into this. One of my themes is that, you know, I don't think the crypto market is going to be able to go up with rates going up, but that doesn't mean that there aren't one or two cryptos out there that could do well, all right? Yeah. So Zcash yeah. is interesting. We're watching it, but I don't know if it's our top pick. Yeah, there are a few others. There are a few others uh, in terms of privacy. Um, Zcash is one of them, but there is now Monero. new... Monero is one. Monero, oh, yeah. Not... Yeah, but apart from Zcash and Monero, which I kind of classify as generation one, there are a few other altcoins, which I would classify as second or third generation. One being a secret network and another being Rose. Uh, which is OSS network. So think of it like first generation, you had Monero, which is like Bitcoin. You can send yeah. and receive transactions and th those are private. But now imagine the smart contracts. You can do smart things and those smart things are also private. So let's say when you're doing lending borrowing, that's private. When you're owning NFTs, you don't have, like nobody can see your NFT. That can also be private. Mm -hmm. So two protocols that are facilitating that. One is called Secret Network, which I personally own, by the way. And I think in terms of long-term portfolio allocation makes sense the second one is oasis both i think at these prices and these valuation uh, are reasonable for medium to long run as well yeah 
Uh, Bill, are you still sharing your uh, screen right now, that screen that you had with the chart on? Could we just pop that open again if you can with the chart of Zcash? Now, Simba, this is going to be something for you. I know you're a technical guy. So if you look at this, and another question here was, you know, what does Zcash do from this point? Well, if you actually take a look at the chart that Bill's shown right here, from an Elliott wave structure, we have a five wave structure. Normally, the market comes back to retest wave one, which is normally giving us a wave four pullback. And this is like actually a correction move. So if you see where the, where the market pulled back to, whether you see that bullish engulfing candle right there on the right there, far right, well, where, where Bill's got his mouse there, go back to that where you had your mouse just now, uh, Bill, go back to the left. Yep, there's it. That's actually a wave one high right there. And the market comes back to retest that level and shown a bullish candlestick formation. This is a great setup for any wave count trader to go ahead and start looking to buy when they look at a setup like this from a technical perspective. So just a little heads up, check that out. Maybe maybe monitor Zcash because there might be a, um, a rally in, 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 in the near future. Hmm. Uh, so Thank you. just a little heads up. Yeah, no, no worries there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, are you guys ready to go ahead and get this battle started? Everyone ready to rock and roll? Sure. Might Good. as well. Bill, Bill's from the 70s and the 80s. He, he knows how to rock and roll. I'm, I'm, I'm with him right there. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get this challenge on the road. Uh, we've got uh, three challenges. All right, let me go ahead and announce the challenges. We have uh, short-term BTC, which is Bitcoin, bull or bear. All right, decide on the buying or selling Bitcoin. Short-term trade, just a short-term trade. Challenge number two, show me the money. I like this one. Show me the money. Uh, I don't know. I don't do it properly. But show me the money. Buy something that is going to go up in the crypto market. Nothing bearish. Anything that's going to go bullish, go ahead and show us the money on that one. Uh, challenge number three, trade for the next five days. So any short-term trade that you want to take on that's going to possibly profit over the next uh, five days. And again, you can have multiple entry points as long as you go ahead and enter those multiple entry points right now. It can be pending orders if you want to stack it, if you want to cost average, whatever you want to do, whatever strategy you want to use, you can do that with that challenge number three. So, viewers, strap down. Things are just about to get real right now. Now, don't forget to subscribe, share, and smash that like button like there's no tomorrow. All right? So, we're going to go ahead and give, because uh, we've had Bull and uh, Media on the, on the show before, we're going to give the, on, the honors to Crypto Mom and uh, Simba to go ahead and show us exactly what they've got based on the three challenges. So, challenge number one, um, Crypto Mom and Simba. Short-term Bitcoin, bullish or bearish? Uh, I would say short-term is, uh, I would say, bullish. I, I don't have much on this particular screen, nothing like that as far as uh, uh, technical analysis. But, okay. you know, I have to try to get that stuff together. I don't use too much. I try to, like, uh, yeah, I'm usually a um, swing trader. I don't usually use the day trade or anything like that. And I don't use too much on charts, you know. Okay. So, okay. And, so uh, you say, you say, somebody, you're going to say bullish on, on uh, Bitcoin, bullish on Bitcoin. Short term. Um, short term. Right. Oh, my bad. All right. Short term, you're going to be bullish on Bitcoin short term. And, and clearly, I mean, Bitcoin isn't breaking through. I think the two levels we're looking at support and resistance is at 37,000 and 45,000. It's pretty much stalling at those levels at the moment right now. Mm -hmm. Once we get a break out of that, it's, 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 it's over Johnny from that point onwards. But right now, you're saying that the price that we're trading right now, and Bitcoin's currently trading at, uh, let me look at my chart, 41,000. We've got about to five or let's call it 5,000 or 4,000 um, room. And I'm talking about $4,000 in room between the next resistance level. And so short-term buy is what you're going to go ahead and do right now. That's right. Hey, Simon, that's short-term buy. Oh, yeah, I'm doing probably a short okay. term. Let me see. Let me think about that. <laughs> That's okay. I'm talking about in a few couple of days. This is a, hmm. <laughs> this is not out. You know, let me do a quick analysis of Bitcoin. We're going in five days here, right? Um, I, no, I no. Say, this one's going to be sh this is going to be short term. You can actually go ahead and close this out in the next uh, five, ten minutes if you have to. So okay. you can load the bus on this one. You can go ahead and, like they say, go big or go home, right? Just look at what it looks like it's gonna be, yeah. 
All right, so so we're going to go in with a with a buy on a Bitcoin. That is going to be uh, Crypto Mom and uh, Simba's choice. Um, we're going to go mm. ahead and. Hey, I'm you, at, you, hold on. You're hesitating. No, but why are you changing? Oh, okay, right, goodbye, goodbye. Going to buy. No, I mean he's guessing himself oh, though. Crypto, crypto mom. We, no, I mean like that's the problem with this <laughs> the analysis, analysis guy. You know, I, he, I second guess myself. Well, you know? don't second guess. So we buying. All right, We're because you, you are you sure? Because there, there is room for a sell right here. If you want to go ahead and sell, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So you got to buy. The buy is in. Five said I got to buy. All right, Why, I'm buy. not going to ask. All right, buy is in. All right, Bill Meady, let's go ahead and pass it on to you. What's going to be a buy or a sell? I guess if they buy, you're going to sell, right? Right, right. So uh, we're looking at a couple things, right? Uh, my work shows that the new range for Bitcoin might be like 41 and a half, 41K to like 37K, right? So I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this, okay? The market has paid you to sell when everyone else is buying. Okay. Like up here, the last time it was at 41 K right on April 13th and then buy it back at 38. Like when the market does this, like U S holiday vanishing act, ruining everyone's holiday dinner. It's seriously, it's like, it's happened like four or five times that I can remember. Bottom line is resistance at 41, you know, 41 and a half K interest rates are rising. Long story short, uh, you know, you know, if if you press me for a short term view, uh, I'd sell a tiny amount of Bitcoin, which I think I put it in the system. Right, okay. small. I think we would rather trade other things, but the the yeah. short term view on Bitcoin would be negative. Okay, okay, all right, that makes sense. Uh, so a short term, so. Really short term, and 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 uh, uh, Bill, what type time frame are we looking at here? Uh, weekly, you got the weekly set up here. Sure. Oh, it is the weekly. Yes. All right. Okay. Weekly. So yeah, yeah, that's that's the weekly. I'm sorry. So what we're looking at here, we're looking at a 90 minute time frame here, right? Okay. So you know, if I took it down to say 15 minutes, okay, it takes a second for it to come up. All right. Now, if you take it down to 15 minutes. You know, our, my my colleagues from San Antonio are correct. It is on support, all right. But I don't think it's going to hold in the very near term because this red candle uh, is very indicative of the fact that I think they just squeezed out all the shorts. So again, okay. uh, you know, if I go if I go back to my ninety minute chart, uh, I I think that's the resistance to focus on. So. If you're watching this out there, you're like, wow, this guy's got a couple different time frames to pick from. Yeah, yep. it, it's tough. You got to pick the right time frame. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially if you're short term trading. Look, if you're short term trading, you've got to go down to the 15 minute time frame. I've even gone down to the five minute if I really want to pick up something small, but that's more on, on actually uh, currencies itself. But but you're right, Bill, you have to pick the time frames to pick the, the right setting for what type of trade you're looking for. So a quick question for you, Paul, if you're going to be short of the market, do you have a target, a short-term target that you're looking to uh, target for the, uh, for the short-term trade? Well, I think, I mean, I don't know if it's going to happen tonight. So when you say short-term, I'm not thinking, you know, tonight, but sure. probably like over the next day or so, I, I think yeah. you're going to see, you're going to see 40 and a half in Bitcoin, okay. right? Because the okay. dollar, the dollar is rising. Okay. Well, if you actually look again, and I don't want to get too technical here, but again, if you look at the 50 minute uh, swing setups, just to go ahead and say that I'm leaning more towards the bearish sell off of the, on Bitcoin, just because we have completed a 50 minute market cycle, which means if price is going to dip back down, I would look for a target around about, and again, it's a, it's a very short target. It's actually 40,500. Now, keep it in mind, we are looking at a 15 minute time frame, so it's a very small profit target, but still, profit is profit, right? So um, I think mm -hmm. that we might just dip down to around about 40,000 and then we might see a little bit of a, another upside rally. So when we talk short term traders and, 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 and viewers that are watching, we're really talking about uh, not necessarily intraday, which means within the next 24 hours, but really in a day or two from now. So that's what uh, Bill's looking at right there. Okay, good. Yeah. 
Maybe do you want to add anything fundamental wise? Uh, to yeah, yeah, I'm right? going to echo echo uh, mm -hmm. the same sentiment as Bill. Um, I think the okay. Fed will will come out all gun blazing. Uh, they're going to be very hawkish. And okay. uh, that being said, I think they have all the reasons to be hawkish. I think the U.S. inflation print in is actually more than the emerging market. So I think the the way the market, in my opinion, will interpret the Fed will be more hawkish than 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 some of the previous uh, meetings, FOMC minutes, and 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 I treat Bitcoin as as a risk asset. Uh, it's similar to growth equity, in my opinion. Uh, there, there can be case of it being a safe haven, whatever. But I, I still think in short term, hawkish uh, Fed means that uh, there will be slight sell off in, 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 the, in the Bitcoin. Uh, and so I echo about, the. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, and you're talking about Thursday's uh, um, uh, Fed pal that's speaking on Thursday. Is that what it is? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and for, for me, the biggest takeaway is uh, the U.S. Uh, print, inflation print, 8.5%, excluding oil, excluding food, is higher than some of the emerging market. I think like even if, if you consider some of the emerging market, they, their inflation print has been lower as well. So that, it, that to me kind of is indicative of the fact that we had a very loose monetary policy and we had a very loose fiscal policy in the U.S. And when, uh, when U.S. monetary policy cuffs, everybody, everybody gets cuff, a cold. So when the Fed uh, starts to hike, hike again, uh, you'll see global rate cycle hiking uh, as well. So because of that, I uh, like for next six, seven months, I just don't think uh, if you're not, if you don't have conviction on some event driven strategy, it just doesn't make sense to, to go long the market. Yeah. Now with the, now this would be a question for, um, for um, crypto mom, Brenda. If, uh, mm -hmm. if inflation is a, an issue right now, which obviously it is, I mean, media just ex explained it exactly to the T. So inflation is a high, uh, a high issue right now with the, with the, the, uh, with the U.S. at the moment right now. Feds are trying mm -hmm. to do what they can do, the raising rates, but still yet, no matter how hawkish they come out there and speak about things, inflation still doesn't seem to be re re retracing back. Now, if we talk about uh, safe havens, Oh. Do we believe that uh, Bitcoin could be that safe and, and we could actually start seeing a rally in Bitcoin rather than a dip in Bitcoin because of safe haven shift? Or at, le at least hedging, sorry, a, a hedge against inflation. Could you please repeat the last part? My Wi-Fi was tripping a bit. Sorry. That's okay. I'm tripping too much here as well. No, I'm just kidding. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so quick question here. So with inflation being as high as what it is, Fed's trying to do whatever they need to do in order to be able to control inflation, but it doesn't seem to be helping. Could uh, Bitcoin still be a safe haven? Not safe haven, I keep using the word safe haven, but it's a hedge against inflation by, by investors now looking more and more closer to maybe possibly investing back into uh, cryptos, especially Bitcoin. Um, I'm going to look that in terms of what's happening right now in Crypto in general, not just Bitcoin. Um, yes. If, if we even look at what's going on with NFTs and what's, you know, the people that are the mainstream adoption that's already happening. Uh, yeah. If a uh, project can launch and make $57 million in one weekend, that's more than the Harry Potter movie produced over the weekend. Um, yes. Then people are wondering, well, if the theaters can't give us that and this other side is giving us 57 million for a project, a lot of institutional buyers are obviously eyeing crypto in general. So is uh, is Bitcoin going to be or is going to be a, is it a hedge against inflation right now? Yes, because of what's happening in the crypto space and um, a lot of the money just coming in from everywhere. Sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, good. Well, let's go ahead and shift over to uh, challenge number two, and that is, I'm going to do it right. Show me the money. All right. So buy something, <laughs> buy something uh, that is going to go up in the crypto market. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pass this back on over to, let's go to Medium Bull and let you guys have a chance to shoot this one first. Go ahead and tell us what is the, uh, the, the, the crypto that you're going to buy, because that's what it is, buy. Yeah, so one one of the event-driven strategy, uh, I think Bill will also agree with this, is near protocol in my opinion. It, lately, it has been on a tear. 
uh, if you if you see the chart, it has it, like it's just has become deco related with with the crypto market, and and there is good reasons for that. So I'm going to quickly share my screen and and sure. show you guys exactly what's going on with near protocol, what it is actually, and why we are bullish on it. And then uh, Bill can help us with the technical setup to kind of show us at what level we should buy. Um, so so this chart basically shows uh, Aurora TVL. So Aurora is an EVM platform built on Near. So anything that is built on Ethereum can be copy pasted in, in Near protocol and, and developers can deploy that. So what this chart shows you is that the total value locked in Near via Aurora network has been growing. And at the moment, it's around 900 million. So last five, six days, the TVL has basically started to rise exponentially. I would even say the last one month, it has doubled, while TVL and other chains have, have gone down. And on top of that, investors have started to invest. Uh, they also had ecosystem funding. So that to me is, 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 is a bullish uh, sign for, for near. The most important thing uh, is the is the rumors of USN. So USN will basically turn near into Terra Luna. So at the moment, near is around 16 to 17 in terms of market cap. And Terra Luna is around between like seven to nine in terms of a market cap. But with USN being introduced, near protocol will have a stable coin of its own. And because of that, near at the moment seems very undervalued because if that is introduced, uh, then it, it means it should be higher in terms of market cap. So you have uh, uh, EVM compatibility. That means Ethereum can come to, uh, come to near. Then you also have this USN thing. And then it also has few projects that allow uh, Polkadot projects to migrate to, to the chain. And, and they also has this unique thing called dynamic sharding, which even Ethereum doesn't have. So for me, mm -hmm. near is something which Ethereum is stri striving to become in, in Ethereum 2.0. And near is something that has executed that at the moment. Uh, the execution is there. So because of these two catalysts, I'm very bullish on near, and I think market is also guiding us. Market is through the price action also showing that all of these uh, catalysts are being priced in. Uh, so I will okay. buy the uh, buy the rumor of USN. Now this is not a rumor. Like if you go on GitHub, the smart contract is already there uh, to be audited. So I'm pretty confident this rumor will turn out to be a fact. So in this case, for me, it's a buy the rumor kind of a play. Okay. Well, if it's buy the rumor, what does the technical sellers bull? Okay. So let's 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 talk about near. All right. So one of the things that Token Metrics does is, you know, you can type in a symbol and look at all kinds of different indicators made by you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So this is a momentum model, right? You know, green for buy, red for sell. And one of the things that's interesting about near is that near went green, like way back, like mid March. And, you know, I, I know you guys trade and you've watched this market whip up, whip down, whip up, whip down. Near is one of the few coins that have actually gone green and it's actually gone up. And when it consolidates, it sort of moves sideways, right? So it's really interesting. And then, you know, to, to sort of dive into the, the more granular aspect of it, you know, we have like a rating system, kind of like Morningstar, if you ever, if anybody remembers that. So on a monthly basis, near ranks 81, anything above 80 is a pretty good trend. Mm. So many has this, this, you know, solid fundamental case. Okay, now if we go over to near, okay, on like a 90 minute chart, right? What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at this huge consolidation that it's done, right? And to me, it feels like a base. Mm. It feels like a base. Now it's trying to break out of the top. So we're here on the trading battle, right? It's like, we got to trade. What are you going to do? Well, believe it or not, we're going to go with the trend. And we're going to say, all right. We're going to buy near right around 17 and a half. Cause if we look at some of our daily chart work, okay. We, we think near can go back to 20. Okay. So here is near the resistance is at 2018. Now, the other thing I, we want to just add is, so you're like, well, wait a minute, Bill, you said you didn't like Bitcoin that much. How come you like mm -hmm. near? Well, there's been a tendency in crypto 
that even when the market is down or sideways, that there's always <laughs> one coin that goes up, right? First, it was Solana back in the day. Then it was Avalanche. Then it was Thorchain. And we think Near is next. So that that's that's how we're playing it. We're actually going to play it long Near and short ETH against it. We can talk more about that later if you want. Okay, good. Well, that's good. There's a lot of information that you guys have given us. So, so you're taking on a trade right now on a buy and expecting a break of that resistance. Despite of that shooting star that you've seen there at resistance, you feel like it's still going to break through there. Uh, and it's also based on your on the um, uh, the, the the token metrics uh, uh, software that's indicated a buy already on that on on that uh, crypto, right? Right. I mean, we're doing we're doing the trend is your friend. You know, mm -hmm. for the shooting star, we're saying, all right, well, uh, sometimes crypto breaks out and comes back all in the same candle. They do the breakout and the retest all at once. So right. fingers crossed on that. Trend is your friend. And like I said, Medi, Medi has been talking about near since it was at like seven. So, mm. you know, we're, we're going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to go with, and I think if you're out there and you're trying to like figure out like, God, how do I trade? Well, if you could come up with one indicator, whether it's fundamental or technical, and, and have that confirmed by something else, right? Then that enhances the power of your decision making. Yep, absolutely. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, good. Now, you're not afraid because you said the trend is your friend, but yet you're in consolidation. So are we trending or are we are range bound? All right, good question. So the uptrend in near, I think, is intact. And what's gone on lately is you've that sideways action that I showed. That's just, that's a consolidation to move up. So near might be doing like a stair step higher. Okay. All right. Good. Well, that's why you guys are the elites in uh, metric in token metrics because this is the type of uh, uh, courage that you guys have trading through resistance with a buy. All right. Well, let's go see how that plays out. All right. We're going to definitely take a look at the uh, the leaderboard. But before we do that, let's jump into uh, let's give uh, 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 Crypto Mom as well as uh, Simber the opportunity to be able to, to to do challenge three, and that is show me the money buy. A crypto. Which crypto are you going to be buying into which the market? Which crypto are you going to buy? What do you think, Ben? Uh, you said Dodge. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, let's I, let's give the Dodge or the XRP people. I, I, I think I, I I like the short term on XRP, uh, but XRP. I'm trying to pull it out of this thing here. I'm gonna have my actual charting stuff up here. Mm. Okay, that is fine. So so your decision. So let's just just figure out what you're thinking behind getting in on that trade is it just the the rumors and the conversation and but it's really not just really i know somebody you're a technical guy in this so this is really not yeah. a technical decision so you're leaning more on brenda crypto mom to say hey you're going to take this one because things go <laughs> south i'm blaming you yeah right? that's about that's what right. it is yeah. <laughs> that, that, that i'm already being blamed for the first one so <laughs> i like it i like it my wife does that to yeah. me every day Gary, you decide, you decide, you decide when it goes wrong, I'm blaming you. <laughs> All right. Gary. All right. So this is an XRP. So you buying the rumor, you buying the, 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 the news saying, Hey, just, we're going to go. I'm in just looking at the price action right now. And that's when I, when I can op open it up, you know, eventually if I'm looking for it. Well, I'm good news look. is uh, it could be good or bad news, but in the last seven days, actually XRP is actually rallied 3.7, three point, sorry, 7.3% in the last seven days and so uh right now we've already seen a little bit of a pump and we're probably going to get into a little bit of a correction move before the next pump takes place. well not i won't say pump but the next rally takes place so xrp might be on a on a nice little short-term trend so that's a good thing yeah, yeah. you know uh, which right. you had what was your reason for that <laughs> i mean i like i mean dodge has also been on on a little uptrend you know, so maybe it's time for you to take a correction. Okay. Well, oh, let's, let me, yeah, uh, like, let me go ahead. Going up. You said dodge. Is he going, no. is he going up? No, we can XRP. We'll stick with XRP. No, we're going to stay in XRP, which you just mentioned dodge earlier. No, we'll stick with XRP. Stick with XRP? Okay. All right, we'll let you go with XRP. All right, so let's go ahead and actually before we jump into challenge number three, let's go take a look at the actual scoreboard right here 
and see where we are with the scoreboard. Because um, oh, maybe somebody's thrown in a couple of extra trays there. I don't know. We've got to check this out. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, so we've yeah. got. All right. So, uh, yeah, it's great, yeah. Simba, I don't see any trading from you guys. I see we've got some trades from Token Me Metrics. Yeah, I'm no trying to pull XRP in. up, but I can't get it. This is just can't operate with this thing here. It's not the, <laughs> it's not the funnest. <laughs> Let me try this. Be better. All right, I tell you what, we're going to give you an opportunity to go ahead and throw those trades in. But what we're going to do is uh, move over to challenge number three. And uh, we're gonna let you let you go ahead and get those trade team, and so we'll get uh, Bill, give Bill and Midi once again this uh, the challenge number three chance to go ahead and shoot at this one, a five day trade, uh, Bill Midi. Okay, so for us, this is what this is what we want to do. Let me share screen. So okay, uh, we we we've talked about we've talked about near, right? And basically what we think, so he, here's near again. I, I know it's, it's kind of ironic, but we're going to a 15 minute chart for the longer term. And you're like, what? So here's what is happening with near. It went up. Okay. And then when it went down, it retraced, it came back to a 30 close to the 38% retracement. So we're not the only ones who like this. Now we're going to assume near is going to be able to move on its own. Because when I go over to ETH for the next five days, okay, so I'm going to a four hour chart on this. Okay. So this is DeMarc's work, Tom DeMarc. He'll count a certain set of conditions, like, I don't know, the high is higher than the high two days ago. You don't have to do the math because he did it for you. It's like one of the original quant technical analysts. So Sweet. when you're in a ranging environment, you see the nine signal. That's why they blow up the number. So when you, Get that set of conditions for the ninth time. That can be a top or a bottom in a rangy environment. So recently we've seen a nine top here. So this might lead me to believe that ETH over the next five days has probably got a shot at going to 2,800. Now that could drag near down. It could. Okay. But that's why we're going long ETH. I'm sorry, long near, short ETH. Now the other okay. thing that bugs me about ETH Right. DeMarc has another system, right? Where when you see the 13 signal, the 13 top. Okay. So this is actually ETH monthly. Yes. Don't laugh on the trading battle. We're talking <laughs> monthly charts. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. So yeah, it, it's a little crazy, but we're seeing things in interest rates. Like Medi brought up what's going on with the Jap, you know, with the Fed. Like, the dollar is rising so sharply against the Japanese yen. I don't know what that means exactly. I have a, a suspicion, but it means something's wrong in the financial system. Like the yen is not some altcoin, right? It's like the third or fourth biggest economy on the planet. And everybody is rushing into the dollar, right? Instead of the yen. Now, I know that sounds nuts, but you were asking about the safe haven. Right. Yeah. People think the safe haven as of now, I know it's a crypto show, right? Everyone cover your eyes. People think it's the dollar, yeah, right? Amazing. It's the opposite of what you would have thought. So, you know, we're going to go long near and we're going to sell upticks in ETH. Okay. And then that's how we're going to try to hang on to capture a, what could be a rally in near while protecting ourselves in case, I don't know, risk assets, stocks, bonds, whatever get hammered we assume eth goes down with that right yeah, and just That's elaborating on Let's talk about that. Yeah. go for it Midi. yeah mm -hmm. uh, just okay. to elaborate on bill's point right um oh, there's another narrative building up with ethereum I'll, I'll quickly share my screen um the narrative is of uh ethereum moving from um proof of uh, work to proof of stake and that mm -hmm. can impact its uh, centralization so right. what has happened is Lido, it's one of the liquid staking for Ethereum. So in order for you to stake your Ethereum and, and secure the network, uh, you need 32 ETH. And not a lot of people own 32 ETH. So what they do is they give the ETH to one of the services called Lido. So Lido takes that ETH and, and stakes it on their behalf and, 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 and splits the uh, staking rewards. So what has recently happened is people are criticizing Ethereum 
and highlighting this centralization risk that, okay, you know what, Lido now owns 25% of all ETH2 deposits. So this is a narrative that that has started to take off a bit uh, in some of the Twitter circles. And also, Ethereum uh, merge has been delayed by a couple of months. So let's say, hypothetically, within a couple of days, uh, we have this new that, okay, you know, the, the, the fact that merge has been delayed further and that this number is also climbing higher, uh, then you could really see people um, basically screaming that, okay, you know what, Ethereum is more centralized than we thought initially, and that can cause a, cause a bit of a negative sentiment in short run. On top of that, you add the bullish, bullish uh, event-driven uh, news for near protocol uh, in short run. Uh, you get this amazing uh, trade, a basis trade, where you can capture uh, the difference. Uh, so let's say near outperform. Uh, so you can capture the outperformance of near with regards to Ethereum. Now, since we're also shorting Ethereum, we are also limiting our downside. Let's say if 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 Fed is too hawkish, what will happen is the Ethereum short will protect our downside in terms of overall uh, market going down. So I think this gives us a very it's a symmetric bet in terms of playing the macro, playing the micro, and playing the crypto. Okay. It's a good it's a good bet because uh, and and Brent will know all about betting right when it comes to crypto and, uh, and sports but the, it's a good bet but it's also a good hedge because any type of trading and, and it happens a lot in options right you got the, the puts and the calls and you and you're hedging a certain position and all you're really doing is saying uh, at this point right there instead of just betting everything on the dollar you're saying hey I'm going to bet on the dollar but I'm also going to go ahead and take a hedge against it in case I'm wrong. I can make up uh, uh, some money on the downside if things go the opposite direction. So it's a great play. Um, uh, uh, Bill, you want to add anything else to uh, to that trade? Okay, nope. so good, good, good question. So I, I'm sitting here trying to figure out, right? Um, you know, it, it looks like it looks like ETH on a very short term <coughs> level. I don't know how much time we've got left in the stream. But it looks like the market is going to give me an opportunity to sell. I already picked up the near, right? So here's the near 15-minute chart. So yeah. we're obviously not the only people on the planet looking to buy the dip with these green candles here on the 15-minute. With ETH, okay, there's the 13 bottom. And it may give me, I don't know, another couple ticks up to put on the last bit of the hedge. So... You know, we're just we're just doing like the the massaging. Uh, the bottom line is the U.S. long bond. So if you've got Trading View, right? I don't know. I'll share this one more time, just sure. just to try to add a little a little macro to it, right? Sure. So I mean, when you have the U.S. long bond yield, okay. So I guess everybody out there maybe has heard of a thirty-year mortgage. Okay, what are U.S. newspapers going to look like if the 30-year long bond, let's go to a daily, I'm sorry. What is, what is the newspaper going to look like if the, the yield on the 30-year bond takes out 3%? What, what's the New York Times going to look like? Right now, right now, the long bond is right there at 3%. This is... You know, for your trading view, I strongly recommend US 30Y. So for anybody out there who's like, hey, how do I figure out what crypto is going to do next? Well, many said it. Watch interest rates. Not just the ones the Fed controls, but the ones the bond market controls. So that's why we like NIR, but that's why we're keeping a sharp eye on ETH, okay? So we can get our hedge in on this rally. I'm going to put the last bit of it in right now. All right. Well, good. All right. Fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and shift it over to, uh, um, let's go ahead and shift it over to, uh, Brenda and Simber. What is your challenge number three going to be like? What's that trade going to look like for the next five days? Oh boy. Are we going technical, fundamental, or just like trade for the next five days. whatever the wind blows? So we're picking any token we want. Any token you want that is uh, going to be uh, profiting in the next five days? Bond. But then, okay. Hang on, wait, wait a minute. Did I see someone flip a coin there? Was that a coin flip? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 
Should we just say no, you can go? So, so a, a quick. Let me let me go ahead and show something here, just to get the give the viewers a little bit of also a, a shortcut to finding a good uh, a good trade opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen just quickly here, while uh, yes. while we have the uh, challengers figuring out their uh, their trade option here. So, if you take a look over here, this is uh, Coin Gecko, and as soon as my chart shows up here, I'll go ahead and share it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go. There we go. All right. So if you go ahead and take a look at the chart right here, what you see is uh, uh, Coin Gecko, and what it does is it's got all the uh, the top 100 coins. So I look at the top 50, and if you look at the top 50, you can see right here uh, you've got seven days, 24 hours, and of course one hour. And this tells you how the uh, how the coins have moved over the last seven days, 24 hours, and the and, and the last hour. So if you're really looking for a a coin that's going to move in the short term or in the next five days, then what you should do is look for something that hasn't moved, like Cardano. Maybe get some news about it, get some information about it, because Cardano hasn't moved in the last uh, seven days. It, it is, it's actually lost 1.3%. So you might want to go ahead and look at the technicals, look at fundamentals, and then drive a decision based on that, because there is some possible upside potential if there are a lot of the other cryptos that are moving. Same thing right here under Shiba, Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu has lost 7.4% over the last day, sort of last seven days. And so this has some upside potential. So you've got to go to these type of things and look at the markets, uh, look at which cryptos has moved the least over the last uh, seven days. And then what you can do is you can take that information, look at news, look at, fun, uh, look at technicals, and then make a decision whether it's set up and supported by, again, the news and the technicals. So I want to br bring it back to uh, to um, uh, Shiba mm. and uh, Crypto Mom. Mm. Is it going to be Shiba? No, I'm just, I threw it out there, but it's Simba. Simba and Crypto Mom, what is it going to be? Mm. Hmm. Hey. He's undecided. Uh, let's go with Shiba. No, no, no. I was gonna say E. <laughs> he was gonna say E. But that's you know, but it, that's just that's not gonna go that much. Right. You're stealing from but someone else. You cannot do that. You gotta change. Are you going to Shiba? Yeah, I let's Shiba. do but Shiba. I, I, didn't, I didn't do no look on the text. <laughs> I say Shiba's a good call. And I say whatever you got, throw yeah. everything at it. No, I'm just joking. You just do what you need. <laughs> <laughs> Is it gonna be Shiba? Yeah, one, it's gonna be Shiba. Just one second. Okay. No, okay, it's going to be Shiba. We're going to go. We're going to go for Shiba. Oh, okay, right. and and so have you looked at the technicals? Is it is this a technical thing or no? Nope. Or is this not a technical? Wait, wait, it's wait. A... <laughs> because Shiba has moved sideways over the last. Uh, in fact, over but the I like last. Uh, the last fourteen days, it's down five point eight percent. Yes, so. Yep. Hey, listen. Um, even if you make it, even if you make it back up to the seven-day uh, open, you've made yourself five percent on that on that crypto. So that's the way you, you actually look at it. If it's down five percent, all you really can do is do the market sideways. If it goes back to the the original seven-day open, you've made yourself five percent, and this is a five-day trade, right? So it makes sense to say, hey, let's go ahead and buy in on Shiba. You guys are good with that? Yeah. I feel like I'm twisting your arm right now. <laughs> no, I mean, let me yeah. see. Let me see what my husband says. Uh, I gotta find it. Mine's here. Where you been? Is this it? Yeah, there you go. Which one? Yeah, you. I would use no, Coinbase. Cool. Cool. All right. So, so quick question. Uh, so quick question with regards to gold. Any uh, any influence in the crypto market with regards to gold? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and. While, the, while uh, Brenda's making a side decision on that, anything on gold uh, that could be influencing, of course, the way the marks are. Does, does, anyone, does anyone go ahead and do some spot checking on gold and com com uh, compare it to Bitcoin to see if there's any sort of correlation um, in the in the rallies and dips? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Bitcoin has a, has a funny relationship with risk on, risk off. Sometimes it's risk on, sometimes it's risk off. It depends yeah. on what market regime we are in. Uh, typically, typically, mostly like 60% of the time, Bitcoin okay. acts as a risk asset, but sometimes okay. it has a very positive correlationship with gold. Uh, and okay. now we also have some synthetic okay. assets which mimic gold. Like we have Pax Gold, for example, which is crypto people's way of expressing risk off via crypto 
by getting exposure through gold. So, so crypto has everything covered. Um, but I, I would say Bitcoin like relationship with gold has been uh, has been kind of a mixed bag. It's sometimes very dis- difficult to decode whether Bitcoin will be um, risk on risk off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I would agree on that. Uh, Brenda and Simber, do we have? Yeah, a, let's go. A- yeah, we decided All she. Right. She, she was right. It looked look good for the short term uh, as far as like, uh, you know, technical to four hours and one hour. Okay. And, All right. Uh, so I think it's like a good it. choice. Yeah. All right. Good. So that's a buy and should be in you, right? So that goes crypto mom and out of her. <laughs> that's technical <laughs> analysis and just it's crypto moms. Okay. All right. Good. Well, if something goes wrong, just blame, blame crypto mom, right? That's how we yeah, do it. Yeah. And when it goes right, like it usually does with her sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Then you tell her that you were the influence. You made it. You made the yeah. decision. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, uh, the scoreboard just before we go ahead and close up on the session. And I do want to know from uh, crypto mom a little bit about, uh, and I'm going to ask you in a moment right now. I've got a question. So we've got XRP, XRP. So what? Don't worry about uh, Simba. If you haven't got that trade in on uh, Sheep, a team will go ahead and put that trade in for you. So you don't have to worry about okay. the uh, logistics behind that. So we've got uh, XRP. Is it? Uh, we've got XRP and we've got Shiba. Uh, what is the third trade that uh, that you took on? Um, can you remember uh, Shiba? Uh, it was Shiba. It was XRP. What was the third oh trade that? Mm-mm. We didn't do that. It was a third trade. Bitcoin. I think they were long Bitcoin. You think it was long? It was a Bitcoin long. Yes, it was a Bitcoin mm-hmm. long. So we just need to get those trades in team. Uh, Bitcoin long. We need to get that trade in. We need to get uh, Shiba long as well. Shiba in you long as well. And then we've got for uh, token metrics. There we go. There's the trades coming in right now. And then we've got token metrics. We've got uh, ETH long. A uh, short. Sorry, my bad. A uh, short mm-hmm. ETH. Uh, we've got near. Uh, I believe that is a long and near. Yes, an ask a long and near, right? And right. We have we, we, we did it in two lots. So we did. We bought two sections of two lots of near twenty and thirty, and then we we sold some ETH against it. Okay. All right. Perfect. So as we stand at the moment right now, it's early <laughs> stages. We can't really tell. It's it's almost like a draw at the moment right now. Uh, no one's really taking the full time lead on this. It is a little bit of a quiet period of trading as we're heading into the Asian session. So um, looks like it's going to be a draw at the moment right now. But we'll see over the next seven, uh, actually, in fact, five days, five days from now, there will be a winner drawn and we'll, uh, we'll let everyone know what the winner is. So um, with that being said, let's quickly go. I'm going to give uh, Crypto Moment just a moment right here to explain um, the, 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 the business that you have, the um, bundlesbets.com. Uh, give us a quick short intro what it is. So Bundles Bets it was previously a, a prediction platform for crypto. And I took over ownership in November of last year. And it we um, we hired a former professional poker player who brought in a very great idea for us to use, uh, which is customized sports pools. Nobody has this um, kind of pools. We are, we are building them from scratch. And our devs who are actually um, in Asia should be complete with those customized pools to go live uh, end, end of May or mid-May. So what they do, we have soccer, we have, we're have we going to add cricket, we have um, NFL, obviously, when when the when it comes uh, back in September, we have the MLB and just all kinds of sports pools that you can imagine in um, using crypto. So you go in with you go in with the in a pool of all the teams probably playing uh, soccer this weekend, and you bet uh, the top twenty percent share the um, the pool the pool size is shared by by the winning top twenty percent. So okay. uh, the licensing is happening within the states where we're getting the entity set up in uh, New Jersey. And uh, we have our Web3 attorneys that should um, should have everything ready for us to go in 43 states out of 50 states. And obviously, uh, the countries which are restricted, we're going to have to let them know 
on the website yes this is restricted but yeah we're going we're going big or going home and yeah we're going to add sports sports fantasy pools as well all right well good that's fantastic well thank you for sharing i appreciate that so um mm -hmm. that's going to be something that's coming up pretty soon uh, for those who are interested in doing some sport betting in cryptos um so it's definitely a, a game this is just one of the adoptions that's taking place in the crypto field that's going to go ahead and hype the uh, hype the crypto market higher and higher and higher and build up that uh, that uh, market cap that we need in order to be able to get some more volume behind it so uh with that being said listen i want to go ahead and uh, uh take a, a last view at the scoreboard just a last view at the scoreboard if we can just pop that up again to see if there's any changes i don't think there's big uh, there's big changes here uh let's see here uh nope we're pretty much at a break even right now for everyone so it uh, looks like we're at a break even. So let me go ahead and start off by thanking everyone for uh, joining us at uh, Bull Midi. Um, thank you very much for joining us. I want to go ahead and give you guys the opportunity to go ahead and share with everyone how they can get a hold of you. But more importantly, share some information about your um, your charity of choice as well. Sure. So we, we chose uh, St. Jude for, you know, children's cancer research. Uh, you can reach us at tokenmetrics.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Token Metrics Inc. All right. Uh, and there's our YouTube channel, right? So both me and Medi have, you know, shows, fundamental and technical. We got a, a lot on our YouTube channel. So check us out, Token Metrics on YouTube. But if you want some of that AI, right? If you want those type of tools, that is tokenmetrics.com, our flagship research service. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you very, very much for sharing. I do appreciate it. And your your uh, your um, uh, charity of choice? Mine or builds? I know mine, right? Y yes. Yeah, ours is uh, it's based in the UK, uh, Redeemed uh, Gospel, and they do... Right now, what they're doing in Kenya for the orphan in Kitale, my hometown, uh, they are actually feeding orphan and widowed women, and they are bringing them uh, clothing and and starting helping the women start businesses so they are not dependent on you know the single moms are not just that there's no one actually there. It's not like they get stimulus like we did here after 2020. So sure. they they are actually helping them get on their feet and as well putting the uh, the mm -hmm. orphan kids into schools. So and that is actually in my um hometown where my mom grew up in in Kenya. So oh, yeah. Great. Oh, that's great. And and how can uh, viewers get in touch with you and to learn a little more about your your style of trading? So I'm not a trader per se. My husband is supposedly uh, learning. Never, 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 never. <laughs> learning <even laughs> but, <today. laughs> but yeah, but um, I am uh, on Twitter. I'm known for giving, you know, my take on crypto in and out of, uh, and uh, advice on NFTs as well. At Miss okay. Crypto Mom 1 or just Miss Crypto Mom, uh, I should be the one and only crypto mom unless they're scammers using my profile anyone with less than a certain amount of followers definitely is a scammer yeah but yeah absolutely okay great now bill sorry my my mic did go ahead and uh, mute a little bit did you give your uh, uh, charity of choice there yes uh it's okay. uh saint jude's uh okay. for children's cancer Fantastic. Sorry, I, I did miss that because the mic just went a little muted on me there at that moment. All right. Well, that's great. Fantastic. Well, uh, once again, I want to thank everyone. Thank you, everyone. It's been a lot of fun hosting uh, the show with everyone. I'm sure the viewers learned a lot. Uh, I've been doing this for 25 years, and I'm learning a lot uh, just tonight alone. In fact, I just learned now that the wife is in control of your decisions. It is what it is. It is what you it is. You just learned that? I always, you just learned that? I, I always thought it was me. I thought I... <laughs> 
I always told my wife I was in Dude, control. Dude, it's but definitely now not just you, man. It's definitely <laughs> not just you. You're not special. <laughs> uh, well, the, you know, power, uh, uh, you know, knowledge is power. And what everyone got right now is a bunch of knowledge. So thank you very much, Bull mm -hmm. Media. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Brenda, as well as uh, Simba. It's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go ahead and say goodbye, I want to go ahead and thank our sponsors, ACAP. Thank you very much. Without them, this is not possible. And also, as a show of appreciation, could we go ahead and do one huge favor and go ahead and smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video across the board. Let's get this video out to as many people as possible. So go ahead and smash that, uh, that like button like there's no tomorrow. I'm Gary Fickard. We should do success, joy, and happiness, and lots of profit. Until next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for hosting. Thank you, guys.